Time's up. Let's do this. Hello, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Babel here, gentlemen. Tonight is abstract, and we have a match in the MSHL season one. It's between Seafood Gaming and you meet wrong opponents here. Abstract, how are you doing, man? Pretty good. That's all I gotta say. Good stuff, good stuff. So good Sunday, stuff. tomorrow is cool for you, and everyone's no, dragging their feet. Holiday, bro. Oh, oh yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Salaman Hari Raya. To all my Malay counterparts out there who celebrate Hari Raya. Yeah, to all the uh, our Muslim friends out there that's uh, breaking fast right now. Enjoy yeah. your food while you're watching this uh, watching this stream. Have fun, and yeah. Oh yeah, I think it's uh, the end of the fasting uh, spree for them there, so... Kudos, well done guys, you survived well it. Alright, that said, speaking about survival, only one of these two teams here will survive in today's games, and I do hope that they will provide a very exciting game here. So, the first game, we will have um, Yumi Rong opponents on Team Legion side, as well as Seafood Gaming on Team Hellborn. The band here is going to be the Magmas, Drunken Master, Pharaoh, and Kronos. So, pretty exciting band, so what do you think? Well, first things first, uh, Magmus and Pharaoh banned by uh, You Made Wrong Opponents. I don't think that they are very uh, new heroes into the banning pool, I suppose. Dragon Master and Kronos are pretty much heroes that, uh, we've been, uh, that we have been seeing picking, uh, picking up in these uh, last, few, last few matches in this competition. So, uh, I'm pretty sure that all four of them is pretty okay. Although Magmus, uh, I don't, Magmus doesn't really have much appearance as compared to the other three, is it? Uh, yeah, well, Magmus is kind of popular because of the eruption and the love yeah, search. But so. I thought it was, it's, it's been disappearing for quite some time already. Yeah, yeah it kind of reappeared over the past, over last, yeah. last in week. In the past, it was pretty <laughs> famous and stuff. Yeah, last week he came back up. So anyway, we have uh, we have the Kraken Rhapsody Morexus being banned. Uh, sorry, being picked up here by Team Legion. Pretty good, exciting heroes there. Lots of team fight synergy and on help on team as well. Fantastic fate witch slayer combo. Pearl is gonna be good for the regeneration as well as the box out technique there. And um, effectively, I'm gonna have this. This is pretty exciting because we got Rhapsody up against Pearl, and it's uh it's always you know in the subtle lines of war. It's always about the supports and how you know they fight. Against each other, so it will it will really be about how Pearl and Rhapsody supports the entire team. That's right. Uh, well, Rhapsody and Pearl, they uh, they are pretty much sworn enemies right there. Although Pearl is uh, Pearl does have a, li a little bit more of an amazing factor due to the fact that preservation um, it, uh, does bounce his enemies away. So imagine if if Rhapsody were to cast Protective Melody, pretty sure that uh, the ultimate will be completely uh, dispelled, and well, that will be much of a threat to the entire team. Yeah, exactly. So, that said, we have the Corrupted Disciple, Bushrek, and Moon Queen being banned out here. So, more or less, a little bit into the carry department that's been addressed so far. Uh, what are your recommended carries, Abstract? In this game for the Legion or the Hellbone? Um, both sides. Both sides, okay. Let's see. Uh, Legion side, they have got Kraken, Rhapsody, and Moraxis. Uh, they can actually pick up any uh, any carry out there due to the fact that they do have like two pretty beefy um, uh, heroes there already. They have got Rhapsody that uh, does provide a little bit more of uh, regeneration and, uh, due to Disco Inferno. So, um, uh, to be honest, I think that any uh, any any carries that does have a little bit more of a magical potential could pretty much do pre uh, can do pretty well, such as uh, Swift Blade, I suppose. Uh, Swift Blade, the Blade Frenzy does uh, goes pretty well with Arcane him, but uh, if they were to advance to the late game, I I'm not really sure if uh, Blade Frenzy would do any work right there. So, um, does does anyone even still play Gemini in this game anymore? Uh, well, it's just very hard to micro Gemini, and so far haven't really seen much of a good Gemini player ever since Honto of Southeast Asia. But maybe we can still see that coming into here because it's really about the carries, and both sides the carries still haven't been picked up yet. So we have MOA being picked. Oh, here. I like that. I, I like that pick to be honest. Okay. Um, before we head on to the Hellborn side, um, the, the, the few heroes, the, the only carries that's been banned right now is Corrupted Disciple, Bushwhack, um, and Moon Queen. So what's left right now for the Hellborn, most prob they can actually pick up a Swift Blade so that they can actually execute a tri-lane uh, onto top, or, um, most probably top or bottom depending on how they want to want to play it. Fate, most probably they might want to put it to uh, to the middle. I'm not entirely sure if they will be put, uh, pitting uh, Fate against a Moraxus, but if that's so, who do you think would have the upper hand? 
Um, I do believe that Fate will have the upper hand. I really like Fate a lot. It's really that kind of a ganky hero. And Seafood Gaming just comes across as a team that can execute quite well. Normally, they don't win the entire series, but I expect them to at least win one match. One so far, one. yeah, uh, I think they can win one game. Whether they can What's win the entire series or not, that is completely up to them. What's the, uh, their current statistics? How many games that they have actually won? Oh, I have times? no idea. No idea? <laughs> I have no okay. idea at That's, all. That's uh, fair enough, fair enough. Alright. <laughs> okay, Hellborn has been taking quite some time uh, into their yeah. half pick. Mm -hmm. Not entirely sure. Let me let why? me explain why I have no idea because these Please teams do. they have not been playing on the main uh you know main stream so far. I, I only remember the games that I casted. Yes, so see. they have been playing off um the stream for a while over the last few weeks, which is okay for them and generally I'm just not sure how they've been faring in those tournaments so far. But still, uh, you meet wrong opponent. I believe this is the team that you casted back in week one and I didn't That's really right. have a chance to see them. So how do you think they fare? Um, r right back there, uh, you meet wrong opponents. I've forgotten who the uh who they actually have a have have a uh game with, but um, if I'm not wrong, they actually lost both matches. It's either they won or uh, they won one or they actually lost uh lost both of them. But um, they do they do manage to control uh throughout the whole game quite well. All, only until the late game, they uh they are not able to capitalize uh their current uh, current potential. Uh, so they don't really have the right time to actually push in and stuff like that. They don't really have good timing issue. Uh, they don't they have timing issues. They don't. Uh, capitalize in uh, whatever advantages that they have so they tend to pull out the game extremely long yeah exactly so here we have the last pick swift play for team legion as well as a draconis coming from the Hellbon team here so well, draconis yes, versus swift blade what do you think is going to be the play here well um it's quite difficult to say how it's going to work out right now now it will be a lot more favorable if uh draconis were to go to the legion team due to the synergy of rhapsody with draconis of course but in this case uh you, you can oh wait i just realized that there's a zephyr in the help on side but yeah before there is we, a zephyr as well yeah before we head on to that um i kind of like the idea of getting like two uh two additional supports uh for draconis due to the fact that well Pretty much everyone knows that Draconis does very well in the NC, and if he has got sufficient stacks in the NC, um, played by Pearl or even uh, Witch Slayer, he could most probably be able to outfarm um, Swift Blade by a lot. But if Swift Blade were to go to a, a more regional approach whereby he just goes around and uh, farms on heroes, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Legion team would have an early start and they can actually end the game pretty early. But Knowing how they play, I'm not entirely sure if they actually want to play. Uh, they actually want to end it early. Most probably, they would in the end pull out the game extremely long because due to stats, uh, Kraken, uh, Moraxes, and Sweet Blade, they they do pretty well in the late game. Just that these three are the only heroes that could uh, that could help the team. Meanwhile, in the help on side, uh, Draconis he can he can stay well in the help uh, in the late game. That's um definitely for sure because he is a carry um, which layer can uh, can actually beef up in terms of items to support the team whatsoever Pearl the most most important preservation is definitely needed uh, no matter what fate is uh, rather questionable depending on how is how their gameplay is and Zephyr is a really beefy uh, hero so it's uh, quite difficult to depict or rather to predict what would happen in this game it's really uh, it's really player based for this one yeah, exactly. So now we're going to talk through to the players as well as the teams here. On Team Legion, you meet wrong opponents. They're leading the fray is Leon2835. I hope that's not his age there. Um, that's Kraken for you. And Kiyik is going to be playing on to the um, Moraxes. So we be played by Shanal. And we also got Amy V Secrets on to the Master of Arms. Last but not least, Rhapsody being played by New World Luffy. And on Hellbond team, we got Seafood Gaming. Yog 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 leading the, the draft here for this game. He's gonna be onto the Zephyr. Wash and out onto the Fate. And we got Minu Ao. No, Minu Ano. Minu, Minu Ano. Ano. I don't know, Mi man. Ao. This is this is like Hokkien, not Hokkien. Chinese, not Chinese. Japanese wannabe. But anyway, he's gonna be onto the Pearl. And we have Finzi onto the Witchler. Last but not least, TSK. This guy on the Draconis. Yeah. So uh, right now, as you can see, uh, 
what we have here is Pearl Witch Slayer as well as the Draconis heading up to the top lane. Not sure if they are going to go with this lineup, but if they do go for this lineup, I'm pretty sure that it's, uh, it's a pretty solid team. They've got uh, Witch Slayer as a uh, pretty um, reliable stun, does have militarization as well as graveyard. Uh, Pearl, I'm not entirely sure, but then uh, the SVCS would be able to put a regional slow around uh, the, um, one whole area, and that could buy enough time for Draconis to stand behind their enemies and just barrage them with fireballs and just burn them to death down. And if the uh, if all goes well, they should be only fighting against a Kraken at the uh, at, at, at the hard lane because I'm predicting Moraxus to go to the middle lane. Um, Master of Arms, Rhapsody as well as Swift Blade to the Suicide Lane. And in in response to that, Zephyr will be soloing in the bottom lane. So um, I'm not entirely sure about a competitive Zephyr. I, do, I haven't really seen a competitive Zephyr for a pretty long time. So um, in your own idea, what would you think? Uh, how, how do you think Zeph uh, Zephyr will fare against a Tri-Lane, Rhapsody, uh, Swift Blade as well as a Master of Arms? Definitely going to be a very hard game. I believe that Zephyr needs a lot of farm in the early game. Probably want to go into the jungle a little bit early as well. But it seems like Zephyr is going down south here in the bottom lane. Which effectively would mean that only if Legion pulls up a bit of a um, protective Tri-Lane, then Zephyr is royally screwed. Other than that, it could be possible that you know Zephyr needs some farm, might go into NC early, like I said. Draconis definitely will be the main priority farm, so that is without a doubt. It's just that Zephyr needs, needs items before she can, uh, or he can perform here. So if Zephyr is left without much of a farm, then effectively we're looking at kind of a, use, a, a use, useless hero, probably. Um, ulti is definitely a plus, but you need to tank up the damage. That is the main job of Zephyr. You go in, you scare the shit out of your opponents, and you tell you meet wrong opponents that they are the one that met the wrong opponents today. So, um, since uh, Hellborn will be facing against a tr uh, facing against a Kraken, which is soloing at the top lane, with the pretty uh, pretty reliable tsunami charge, should be able to get himself away from uh, from any um, bad things that may happen upon him. So. We might be able to see Witch Slayer and Pearl running around uh, most probably to the middle lane and try to catch up some kills onto Moraxus as much as possible. That would be much dependent on how they actually want to execute that. Uh, since it is a Fade at middle lane, like you said, Fade should, be, uh, should have the upper hand against Moraxus. So with additional amount of farm, he should, uh, Fade should have uh, more, more uh, have better items in terms of getting a, a, a bottle a lot more uh, early in the game. Um, sufficient amount of harassments onto Moraxus so that the Hellborn should be able to get easier and quicker kills onto Moraxus, which may give Fate a huge upper hand in the early games and get his reflection early in the game and even try to hunt down anyone in the bottom lane. Oh, okay. So, um, the reconnection actually is going underway here for the MOA. Mm -hmm. It is actually very slow. Very, very slow. So we're going to give him some time to do that. Meanwhile, um, well, really, I don't see how Legion can pull off a tri lane. But if they do that, it will definitely include the Swift Blade. And if that happens, um, I think Hellborn needs to, needs to really just come in as fives. But because they have a semi-jungle kind of a hero. You know, what it's if you know, what if they don't don't run for a tri lane? Who would accompany uh, Kraken at the top lane? Because personally, no one in the Legion except for Swift Blade have a good um, like escapes uh, escape spell. So it will probably be dead weight at the top lane. Yeah, definitely so. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that. Swift Blade needs the support, so we're looking at Rhapsody down south with him. Uh, Kraken can be a top lane with Tsunami Charge, pretty good stuff. Morax's MOA mid lane, that's oh, a definite right. there. Yes. Double stun as well, so good oh, stuff there. You forgot about that. Yeah, so that's it. We have the Hellborn now nicely going into the Legion jungle. All five of them are gonna be here for a while. And effectively, that might be a bit of a bad news here for Team Legion because you don't want to get spotted out here by a five man train. The Water of Sight will be planted by Minuano. And, uh,. Swift Blade, Rhapsody. Rhapsody does have sufficient water. Oh my god, Rhapsody, don't want to be here. The stun from Fate will land nicely. Zephyr with the gust. Gonna happen quickly as well. And Rhapsody is left for date here. There is nothing that the Swift Blade can do. Down goes Rhapsody. Easy bloodlust for Team Hellborn. And Seafood Gaming just got the first feast for today. Well, bad initiation. I mean, not bad initiation. Bad start for uh, Yumin Rom opponents. Well, they actually 
well, never mind. I'm not gonna make a pun of their name. So we have Moraxus in the middle lane. So apparently they are indeed going to go for a tri lane at the bottom lane. Uh, of course, assisting Swiftblade to get the, get kills and uh, uh, last hits as much as possible. So that will be a tri lane versus a tri lane at the bottom lane instead of having uh, Zephyr solo at the bottom lane. So we do well. This is rather interesting. I w I would suggest putting a lot more emphasis at the bottom lane. So Zephyr and uh, this uh, uh, Kraken will be at the top lane. Most probably it's going to be a very, very passive game, so I wouldn't add uh, much say of anything else. And Moraxus versus Fade, I think that we would be able to predict the right thing. So meanwhile at the bottom lane, we do have Wishlayer actually being constantly harassed by Rhapsody as well as Master of Arms. And Wishlayer already down to the half health. We do have Dragon, Fire, uh, Dragon Flame coming in from Draconis, followed by another stun coming in from Master of Arms just to stop Draconis on his road. So meanwhile, all that, uh, all that action has been going on. Sweet is getting a decent amount of farm, although not a lot. He's having 145 GPM in the early one minute. And we oh. have the Graveyard coming in onto Rhapsody, really low HP right now. Beautiful World Bubble will be able to push away um, this Master of Arms and Sweet Blade at the same time. So, lots of things going on. The mana, uh, the mana for Hellborn is running really, really low. Meanwhile, the Legion, they do have quite an arsenal of skills coming in. Sweet Blade has still full, full mana for his uh, Blade Frenzy, not to forget Staccato from Rhapsody. So, I, the first one to deplete their mana at the bottom lane might be the first one to lose. Um, kind of the case here, but of course you have good amount of clarity potion here that will really just heal up the mana regeneration for the bottom side. Really top lane, nothing exciting seems to be happening. Zephyr should be able to hold the fort there. Meanwhile, mid lane, Morax is up against that of fate. Pretty boring stuff as well. Just down south here, we got a tri lane going on. And right now, the rune is just going to spot out here. It's just about two minutes, and if it's a bottom rune. Oh, there goes the world bubble. Nice. Invisibility rune being picked up there by Pearl. They might just be able to pull forth a good gang here. Pearl with the world bubble um, effectively a gang at mid lane is also very good but that's a that's a more access it's kind of tanky kind of hard to kill so i really like to see them try and kill the swift blade instead so uh, meanwhile we do have pearl cur uh, currently running up to the top lane no idea why though we do have zephyr currently at f uh, level 4 kraken at level 3 so we have got zephyr a little bit more uh having the offensive uh, offensive base spells because he does have a um level 2 onto cyclones which means of course he'll be clearing creeps a lot faster and have a little bit more initiation power here in the middle lane meanwhile we do have fate trying to run away from the more access as well as rhapsody unfortunately would not be able to get a kill back to the top lane we do have world bubble currently being plays down and Kraken goes in with the tsunami oh. charge running away missing the gas unfortunately for Zephyr and they would not gain a kill on the Kraken even though his HP is extremely low so action after action they do not accomplish anything at all unfortunately but really nice to see that Rhapsody is trying to buy some time for uh, more access to gain up his um, amount of creep kills so if I'm not wrong, they should be on par right now. Fate currently with 10 creep kills and Moraxus with 15 actually. So Moraxus does have the upper hand for the time being. Back to the bottom lane. Uh, two against two. Not much of an action. So uh, we're just going to pass that, uh, pass up a little bit much off on that. Yeah, pretty good stuff happening down south here. We have a um, three minutes game so far. Both sides looking pretty okay. Swift Blade level three as well, and Swift Blade should be at about a total of 157 GPM up against that of Draconis 228. So it's kind of clear that Draconis is winning this lane so far, and that's because Rhapsody has been more or less a little bit absent from this. Hold that topic, because here comes the Sateko. It's gonna connect. The first one goes down. Dragon Flame is gonna be used as well. They all gonna pull back because of that. So great skill by Draconis. Good stuff there. Meanwhile, top lane Zephyr level. Four Five, Kraken level 4, so it's pretty clear that Seafood Gaming, they definitely look like they are winning all three lanes. Um, it still remains to be told though. Mm -hmm. So we do have a lot of Wanderers around from the Hellborn side. Fade and Pearl advancing to the middle lane, and Wishly is still hi hiding. Wait. Oh yeah, Wishly is still hiding around, and of course a uh, uh, Rhapsody is still hiding, uh, just running around in the Legion's NC. Unfortunately for the Hellborn, they do not have much wards except for the uh, the ward planted by Minuano, Minuano uh, in the uh, before the start of the game. So we do have a uh, hasted Witch Slayer joining into the fray with Draconis. So it will be a three against two. I'm waiting for an initiation anytime soon. Most probably it will be started up by Master of Arms with the charge shot, or else it will be a Staccato from Rhapsody. But, but since 
is uh, Draconis is really close to, to his own tower. I'm not entirely sure if whether the Legion will be able to secure any kills even um, if they manage to put out a full blast of stuns onto him because uh, level 4 of a Swift Blade, a level 2 Blade Frenzy would not really be enough to get a kill onto Draconis despite the fact that uh, Charge Shot and Staccato were to be uh, placed down mighty on Draconis. So there might be some... Oh wait, hold on a second. Oh, top lane. Top lane. Zephyr running away from uh, the readers of the Kraken and he's trying to run away HP extremely low and oh juked out of that Kraken does he have his tsunami charge yes he has one more one more hit and 194 critical hit on to Nyok and that would be the one kill for the Legion side level 6 Kraken meanwhile bottom lane charge shot right onto Draconis tries to run away pops out the health potion and it will be denied by Draconis as well as Witch Slayer himself so he has to go back home and heal up right now leaving Swift Blade alone at the bottom lane so he might be a little bit more vulnerable to any focus attacks by the Hellborn he has to be careful unless uh, Rhapsody joins in, uh, joins in with uh, this, uh, this Swift Blade anytime soon yeah, that's a mid lane level 6. Moraxis up against a level 6 fate. Pretty fair fight so far. We got Pearl here level 2 as well. Gonna try and see if he can take the 6 minutes rune here. Um, fate gonna join here. So regeneration rune. Pretty good stuff. Uh, fate's gonna ball that up. So that's good stuff. We also got Swift Blade down south here. That is completely in misery so far. 219 GPM. Actually kinda low so far for this entire team. And... I actually kind of like the fact that Kraken was able to take the offlane kill. I like that a lot because that means that he's going to be put in charge here for the entire team. And that also means that Hellbond will not win all three lanes. Really, Zephyr's level 6 needs the farm. I just... I pity this guy, you know. There is not much support for him to walk around with. And maybe Hellbond should look towards rotating to the top lane. Because that is a safe lane for them. It's the short lane. They should make sure that at least um, whoever that's leading there is doing well. And if you look at that, Kraken with the constant hammer going in there. Well, a few more hits. Might be able to pop the skill. That's it. Fate's in a little bit of a trouble so far with the NC, but should be okay. And um, Zephyr, again, terrorized by this beast of a monster. Kraken just hammering his skull in just keeps wanting to harass this Zephyr. Zephyr right now level 6 doesn't really have anything to, you know that can really deal with this Kraken. Kraken has the ultimate up already and there we go release the Kraken oh, no. that's gonna slow down Zephyr a lot. Gas being used pops the ulti but that's not gonna do anything at all. That's a down south engagement's gonna happen. Double stun, triple stun, fire coming out. MOA dropping dead really quickly as well. Legion team is in a very bad spot except for the top lane and so far it's all because Almost everyone is down here at the bottom lane. This is not the kind of commitment you want to see from the Hellborn. You want to see them at least make sure that the Zephyr can farm. They're like, you know what, New York, you can just go and farm yourself there. And that is not the right attitude so far. So they are trying to focus a lot more down onto Swift Blade. Currently only at level five. Uh, Draconis is already at level six, so that's uh that's some nice stuff. He's got his steam boots as well as his soul scream ring. And meanwhile, the counterpart Swift Blade not really much of anything. Only have a red boots and one punch dagger. Does uh he does have gold enough for another punch dagger to get himself the ghost marches. So uh but he doesn't really have the opportunity to go into the outpost anytime soon just yet. As you can see, the Legion has been spreading themselves out pretty nicely so far. Kraken has uh just bottled up the haste rune so get uh, that grants him a lot of movement speed to get himself roaming around top lane to the bottom uh, to the mid lane so uh, middle lane as uh, as for concern master of arms just hiding around sapping up experience as much as possible morax is trying to get uh, as much experience as uh, as much as possible as well trying to get farm gpm and everything else as you can see, the Legion has been uh, faring up pretty, uh, pretty, pretty well. Oh. Uh, as I as I said, the Legion side they have a uh, pretty good uh, startups, but not entirely sure if whether they actually want to uh, want to contribute to that. So we have got charge shot being missed out due to the fact that uh, reflection was being used by uh, Washington Dao by the uh, at the very very right time, but not entirely sure. Did they actually? Oh yeah, they just planted the Water of Revelation, so okay. uh, they can see fate at this time right now. Wait, did he? Wait, what? Huh? Yeah, that actually what a rare for civil spot that up a bit slow. That's a top lane again. Zephyr terrorized by this monstrosity right now. Tower's gonna help deal a bit of damage onto the Kraken, but here comes the support, and this is just a level three pearl. And Kraken uses the ulti again. This is the same phase three times in a row. It may not be enough. No protective melody, but there goes Zephyr. At least Rhapsody picks up the kill. Slow, so, uh, slow witch slayer coming from behind. My God, might I be able to save the team that bit? But that's it. Nyok does get well, payback. We have Swift Blade going in with the Blade Frenzy trying to get a kill on to the Draconis. And yes, that will be enough. The combination of the ultimate as well as the Blade Frenzy will be enough to get Draconis before he reaches the tower.
Unfortunately, that is going to be the sad story. That's a melee. Fate goes in, not able to pick up the kill. Morexus misses the axe. It's okay. It's got plenty more to use. Um, let's call him more X misses. Uh, but that's <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So more is strategy right now. Help on team. The initial plan is really just to give Draconis farm, which so far was working out quite well. Um, they know that Zephyr is not a priority farm, like I've said before. The game started. Um, unfortunately, Zephyr was not able to hold up front against the Kraken, and oh, oh, then they decided that they need to do that there. Yep, there we go. Witchler, invisible, lands the Griffith stun, tries to run away. That's one beast there again. They have a lot of tanky heroes on team Legion side. Yes, yeah, one thing that the Diablo should be uh, afraid of, because they, they they only have Zephyr to uh, to be the tank to, to be the tank right now. So, uh, Hellborn, Well, I'm pretty sure that you can tell straight off uh, from the bat. Fade, Pearl, and Witch Slayer, they are just pieces of paper uh, in the eyes of uh, Swift Blade. So, um, I'm just an anticipating some action in the middle lane anytime soon. Fate should know that there is actually a Word of Revelation in the middle lane. So, he might not want to overcommit right now, even though that he does have like two supports at the, at the side. Um, they don't have any. Oh, oh, wait, never mind. They do have a ward. So, they can actually overcommit. <coughs> Oops, sorry about that. Uh, no, we're not on the top lane. <coughs> We are both Sorry. coughing blood today. Oh, fate! Mid lane trouble! Stun's gonna happen there. Easy kill from Moraxis. And Washer and Dar takes the fall. That's a top lane. Kraken again wants a piece of this Zephyr. He wants turkey mid. It's early tanks giving so far, but Zephyr gets extra regen up there. Now gonna try and run. Kraken, tower diving. Zephyr still running. The 246 creature smashes Cal in, baby. He goes down just like that. Kraken now gonna get chased by Rhapsody. But Rhapsody is almost less than half his level. And this is not recommended. It. Guys, don't do this. Pull back. This is this is not right. This is a level 11 beast that the Hellbond created because they didn't want to address the top lane farm. Free kills anytime soon? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Witch Slayer does have a silver bullet, but I don't think that that's going to stand a chance onto a Kraken that's uh, having 1.3 thousand HP and a Mystic Vestment. So. He's most probably going to run uh, run amok at the top lane like all the way until like uh, 20 minutes or whatsoever. So by 20 minutes, he should get like Shaman's Headdress. He should get his um, uh, Helm of uh, Helm, uh, Helm the Black Legion. So that would make him one beefy ass hero. And it really depends on how Dracon is going to get his farm. Because at, at this time right now, he's at level 7. He doesn't have one point of Fury Brush. So he, he does he can only rely on Blazing Flight and Dragon Flame for his uh, farming capabilities. And on a side oh, note, wow. Help One have yet to put any... Hold that thought. Kraken engaged. Nice stun. Militarization as well. Burning Shadow being used. He's hammered by the NC. This is unfair. Somebody call a judge here. Kraken is going to go down. There he goes the poison. And Washington that picks up the kill. That Let's say mid lane Dracon is not gonna get challenged here by Moraxus. Moraxus does have portal key, but there's is no shown just yet. And down goes the dragon again. Portal key, by the way, was just purchased by Moraxus before that fight there. So, um, well, at least help on team doesn't know about it. I'm not entirely sure about the progress of uh, Hellborn right now. Um, Zephyr is doing a pretty bad time at the top lane currently with one kills and four deaths. And guess what? He's the highest GPM of the team. Draconis is only at 200 GPM. Has been picked off uh, quite frequently in whatever lanes that he's uh, he's he's at right now. So one kill and two death. Not as much as um, this Zephyr is right now, but still, I'm not entirely sure how they are going to really distribute the, uh, the NC kills and what uh, whatsoever. Because as you can see right now, Zephyr is the one that's taking the NC as much as possible due to the fact that he does have level 4 Cyclones so he can actually bring down the NC as much as possible most of them are actually double stacked so that's uh, one nice thing to see oh, mid lane meanwhile oh, Fade went down easily by the Kraken right there and Takato and Charge on everything else per man Pro have no chance oh wait preservation is used but of course denied HP potion by the more axes Hitting pretty well right there. Our Zephyr doesn't really have the right mindset. He didn't really go in at the right time, but actually it doesn't really matter because I don't think they can actually help him in any cases. He couldn't even do any kills at the point of time. Bottom lane, we might see some action. We might see more blood and glory for help on end the lane. Oh wow, big Kraken mm. ultimate. Just to steal yeah. the NCs here. 
Um, good try. Oh, Unfortunately, oh. not gonna be really effective. Wait. He's gonna regret it right now. Here comes the Witchler with a one-man stun. What the hell? And also good Draconic skill as well. That is a fake illusion by the side. I think got distracted. That goes the oh. Silver Bullet. And that goes the Protective oh, Melody. Hey. That is a great amount of skill that's being used by the Lyrian side. Nice toss away by the MOE, but somebody's gonna have to die here today. And Rhapsody goes down. MOE goes down as well. And that's one hell of a massacre so far. Great skill. At least it saves the Prize Kraken, which is so far a force to be reckoned with. Yep, bottom lane is dead. We do have Swift Blade currently. Ooh, currently, actually, it doesn't really matter. But hey, uh, good thing is that Hellbone actually denied two towers. That's a good thing. Yes, no? Yep, fantastic stuff. At least that is going to slow down the goal progression for Team Legion side. Um, they are all looking pretty good so far. 9 is the 6, 5.5k goal lead for them. And Kraken is so far just the only guy that I feel is really outperforming this in this entire game. Top lane level th uh, level 12, you don't expect that to happen on an off lane. And really, Zephyr is so poor that he doesn't even have good boots right there. Somebody give him some donation, please. He shouldn't even get stuck onto his boots right now. Uh, actually, well, it's debatable. He can He, I mean, I understand if he wants to rush for the uh, Helm of the Black Legion, but sticking onto uh, onto just normal marches, I don't really like the idea of that. He better get better boots right now. Top but lane. hold on a second. Left a uh, four man rush onto Kraken. Would he be able to get a kill? Yes, there is a stun right there. Another stun pulling it out. World Bubble and Gus actually stacking each other, but it doesn't really matter because they should be able to get this kill. Oh, wait, hold on. We do have the outside clone gets out and really list of the Kraken is going to be used as well as the final option for Kraken but in the end only stuck in Zephyr as well as Fate but doesn't isn't really going to do any damage or meanwhile in the bottom lane we do have Morax is actually picking up a kill onto this Draconis force to be reckoned with it looks like Morax is putting up the GPN charts currently at 423 increased by a lot due to that uh, recent kill yeah, good stuff. That's a top lane push gonna happen here from the Hellbound team. All four of them could be knocking on the defense tower tier one. Meanwhile, on the flip side, uh, Legion side, they are a little bit confused, I think. They might want to push the mid lane, but that's only more there. They don't really have what it takes to push down the tier two so early in this game. Top lane goes down, no defense whatsoever. That's because Kraken is not alive, and that is the highest grossing level hero for the entire team so far. Hellbound team's gonna pull back, and well, who do you give the favor to so far in this game? Um, definitely to the Legion, but if they don't capitalize in whatever they're doing right now, there could be a possibility for the Hellborn to actually pick up, um, pick up on their pace. Due to the fact that, well, okay, Legion, they have, uh, three characters, more access to Swift Blade as well as Kraken, uh, they are really having really, really good farm right now, but, um, like I mentioned before, they don't like to push. They don't take the opportunity to really push and get towers and uh, have even higher goal, uh, goal progression so uh, that's one thing that they usually lack so uh, Hellborn they might actually make uh, make full use of what they have right now because everyone is pretty um, they, they are ki kind of on the same terms like Zephyr is like 300 GPM and Draconis is like 244 GPM if given enough time frame for all of that they can actually skill, uh, skill up a lot more in the GPM charts uh, as they progress in levels so they should even uh, be higher than more access if uh, the Legion don't get to the second tier tower in the middle lane bottom uh, lane gang's gonna happen uh, coming on for freight uh, the reflection is gonna be used by that's not gonna be effective because Swift Blade does have this uh, blade frenzy going on and Swift Slashes should be used quickly to pick up the kill and yes he gets it done Draconis nothing he can do as well it's such a good counter Shanal there doing good stuff Mm -hmm. This one bad thing about the Hellborn having too much um, magical base damage because right now they don't, uh, honestly they don't have uh, outright physical damage output because everyone should know that Draconis don't do damage in terms of physical damage, it's all from the burn uh, that really wreck havoc around uh, New Earth. Uh, same goes to Zephyr, all the damage goes uh, goes from Cyclones as well as the Typhoon stacks, um, hardly any much from uh, from a normal damage unless he does get a um, thunder, uh, thunder Claw and just uh, tries to do something about that but I, I'm not entirely sure if he actually wants to go, go for that so uh, depending on what item they actually want Want to get then I'll uh, I'll give it over to them so once the Legion like let's say Swift Blade gets his uh, shrunken head which he technically have right now with the blade frenzy um, Hellborn is pretty hard for the Hellborn to kill Swift Blade take a look at his deaths he have uh, oh look zero deaths <laughs> that explains yeah. a lot um, you mean who Swift Blade Swift Blade yeah Swift Blade 
Well, the try lane down south didn't work out. Uh, really yes. was just about securing a farm there for Draconis. So Draconis now is level 10. But level 10 Draconis up against a level 13 so play. That's really bad news for Team Hellbond. So the strategy kind of fell off the beginning here for Seafood Gaming. But they still can go down south here to try and kill the Swift play. He doesn't have the Swift Slashes right now. So that is something that I think they can try materialize on. Oh, there we go. So it's a pretty easy four-man gank. And the Silver Bullet finishes it up really nicely as well. Kraken going to be a little bit far off the outskirts of that engagement. It will not jump it, but he is going to meet oh, up no. against Draconis here. And a release that Kraken going to be used as well. Here it comes Moraxus, and it still goes to um, Kraken at the end of the day. So at least that's good, st good stuff. They're still also going to be able to take up the um, Ancients here. And I think that at least is a bit of a bad news here for Hellbone team. Well, um... Draconis has always been picked uh, picked up uh, nowadays. Like when he's farming, he just gets caught up. Right now, um, the amount of uh, death from the Hellbond is pretty reasonable, I guess. Zephyr with World Bubble, big it. stuff. Rhapsody getting challenged by Pearl, and down goes Rhapsody. Easy gaming. Support versus support. Nothing the rest needed to do there. Nice to see that the Legion is finally doing uh, doing some difference where they are actually trying to push the second tier defense tower, but they're doing it alone. So. I, uh, that's one thing that I don't like, like, they can push, sure, I mean like, uh, I appreciate the fact that they are finally pushing, but they are not doing it as a team, they are quite individualistic uh, at, at, at this point of right now, uh, it's already been 21 minutes, and they are not making much progress, except for in terms of kills, uh, for, for the past 10, or uh, 5 to 10 minutes. Yeah, nothing much being done here. And Key at a mid lane playing the Moraxis, really just farming up as much as possible. 2.3k gold in the bank, might want to pick up something a little bit more tanky. Um, I'm looking at a shrunken head, I like that a lot because that at least is going to negate away the ultimate of the Zephyr, as well as most of the damage come from Draconis. Um, in general, I think that Legion team is kind of weaponized. They already have most of these items that they need. You have Portal Key up on Kraken, you have Portal Key up on Moraxus, you also have the Rune Axe as well as the um, well Firebrand up on Shunal there. So those are some good items that Legion team has. They have a lead so far, that is confirmed. It is going to cause a lot for them to not throw away this lead. They need to make sure that they group up as fives and start taking big team fights. Because this is where Hellbond don't have the items, but Legion does. So this is where they can actually try and extend the lead a little bit further. That's right. Uh, nice to see the fact that uh, Pearl actually picked up uh, her Potter key. Pretty, uh, pretty good thing. And um, as you can see, the Legion, they are capitalizing in uh, their uh, ancient stacks as much as possible. So that's one thing I really love about, uh, about, about this team. They always make full use of their ancient stacks, unlike any other teams. They don't use the ancient stack as much as possible. But in, the, uh, in this case, they do use the ancient stacks a lot. That is, uh, that is probably why the Legions like Swift Blade, Moraxus, and Kraken always have like high GPM at this point of time. But slowly, but slowly and steadily, uh, Zephyr is getting his GPM a little bit higher than before. Currently with 352 GPM, pretty decent if you ask me. And uh, he's going for a Ice Brand at this point of time. Um, Frost of Skull maybe? What do you think about that? Yeah, well Frost of Skull is fantastic. Um, nope, here comes Zephyr. So he's actually going to try and take up a little bit more farm in the mid lane. Well, Zephyr does have the Ice Brand and that is quite a big deal. I don't like the Dawnbringer on Zephyr simply because it, yeah, it does give a little bit more fun. But Zephyr, you want to make well, sure that you really go need full it. tank. Really yeah, need yeah, he does so have he does the have cyclones, cyclones as well. Yeah, exactly. So um, the extra tornado, little tornado babies, is just around Zephyr. Good stuff there. They're all gonna pull back so far. And yes, another Ice Brand being picked up by Shannel. So it seems like he's going for the Dawnbringer. Um, again, don't like Dawnbringer because it really doesn't accomplish much. But still, most of these players these days, they like to pick it up because it's seen as an all-rounder item. It's like, it gives you sufficient, um, you, you can say sufficient utility to farm. And it I also helps to, helps to give uh, extra MP, HP whatsoever. So yeah, good stuff. Good stats gain, I mean. More like, uh, it, it, in my eyes, it's usually a jack of all trades myself, man. Yeah, it doesn't really give you anything specific. That's the thing I don't like about it. But still, um... If you do have the extra money, it is good to get a bit more, you know, all-rounder stats. Don't like that idea because I thought that Swift Blade can go for something a little bit more aggressive. Something like a Jomita's Bane would be good. Maybe even with uh, the amount of money that he had, you know, can go for some off-skirts uh, kind of a build like Assassin's Shroud would be ideal as well. But anyway, they're going to push the bottom right, right here. Alright, that was going to be a 
for the Zephyr. Mm, questionable. Um, just gonna give it to that. Uh, give it to him for now. But it does look like Zephyr is going to go for a uh, damage based Zephyr instead of a tanky based Zephyr, whereby he deals damage off based off on Cyclones alone. So he, uh, I guess that he's just going to go for um, damage onto physical a little bit more than a magical and ta uh, tankiness. Because if he were to build up tankiness, most of his damage gonna be built up from Cyclones and uh, Typhoon. So uh, he does have Frostburn, so he's probably going to go for a um, the Dawnbringer that would increase his GPM. Oh, sorry, not GPM. His um, uh, DPS a little bit more, and from that point on, there is a possibility that he will actually want to go for the what's the weapon called? Um, charged Hammer. Yes. Um, yeah. He wa he might want to go for the Charged Hammer if he, uh, if he continues like this. Yep. At, at least that's. Uh, yep. So we have. Surf Blaine picking up the Dawn mm -hmm. Dawnbringer mm -hmm. in general. 35 minutes in, that's kind of early. At least, like I said, you know, it gives him good standard stats. 500 GPM, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, he's just so under-regulated. Like, no one cares about Surf Blade the moment they realize that Kraken's becoming a problem. So GC, yeah. or rather Seafood Gaming, is a little bit more reactive. They're being proactive. They're not seeing what is the next problem uh, using the strat that they are pulling forth here. That's it, we have Swift Blade um, being spotted out here by Fate. Fate is gonna escort Swift Blade, very nice of her. Nothing much can do as well. And uh, we have the entire Legion team just knocking on the defense tower. It is effectively gonna go down real soon. And there is not much of a defense from Hellbone without the Zephyr. Zephyr is just down south, farming as much as he can. Here comes the pot in, and Zephyr better get out of here. Because there's nothing he can do here by himself. Uh, yeah, it's only the support, so... They're not going to be able to catch his effort if he does put pot out. So there we go. Homecoming stone is going to be used. And we also see Kraken. Kraken is just obsessed about this Ancient on the Hellbond team. He has been here for three times already. The first time he nearly died. The second time he picked up a kill in Draconis. And now he is still here for the farm. It is kind of questionable because they are stacking up their own Ancients. But I would like to see this group of Ancients go to Swiftblade instead. Well, um... Well, you can you can say that you can say that, but um, I'm not entirely sure how they are, how are they going to approach this game. Are they going to? I mean, like, at this point of time right now, they are going pretty steadily right now. And Hellborn, they aren't getting uh, getting the uh, proper farm as as much as much as I thought because like Draconis, he does well in the NC, but as you can see, he's just. He's just destroying NCs that are uh, that are not even stacked. So that's why he's uh, losing out a lit uh, quite a lot. I would say he's losing out quite a lot. The uh, support of the team isn't really putting up um, much uh, much alertness and details onto the NC. If they were to put more uh, details into the NC, I'm pretty sure that uh, Draconis would be able to grow a lot better. And speaking of which, looks like there's gonna be a warp clef onto Zephyr. So that is uh, pretty evident that they are. Uh, that is one demonic breastplate. Oh wow! Two, charged hammer. Channel deciding to go for a bit of a um, mobility item onto the portal oh, key as well. Wow. This is gonna surprise the Draconis, but Draconis does have the Nulled Stone. So Draconis really will go for double protective. He does have only one half of that up, so he should be looking at a shrunken head real soon. If he gets that, he will be kind of invulnerable in team fights, and that's what I want to see from a Draconis. Angry Dragon, Spewing Fire, you know, Dungeon and Dragon, kind of a wanna be situation for Hellborn team. That is the perfect situation for them. But will they have the space to get those items? That's the question here, because Legion team, they have almost everything up and online all skills of cooldown as well. They might want to get Kong, and if they do get it, they will go for the push. Mm -hmm. Well, this is something new. Uh, I don't exactly remember them uh, being so aggressive. But hey, it's a, it's, it's a new start. It's uh, something new. So, it's, um, well, it's pretty evident that they are going to get Kong. Legion, I don't think that they have any uh, deterrence against the Legion right now. So, it's definitely going to go to Sibley. Uh, the the Pokemon of life, of course. So, with that said and done, uh, they might push to the middle lane, they might push to the bottom lane. I don't think that they will want to waste time going to the top lane trying to push and get the defense tower. So, as you can see, they've put his position themselves in the middle lane. Do not know why Draconis is still farming. Do not know why the double damage fate is still there. And do not know why. Zep okay, never mind. Now I know why. Zephyr is uh, potting back home. And um, fate potting back home as well. 
they are gonna try to do something about the Legion team, but I don't think that they even stand a chance right now. Fortification is gonna be used up, and of course, the Gus is gonna miss everyone in the uh in the team right now. Oh, Dragon is just waiting in, inside the bushes, and there we have it. Beautiful. We do have the uh, tsunami chance that will be able to get the different out of position right now, and everyone is congregating in the middle. Not good at all. Not good at all. Help on. They are all together. There is a possibility that the Legion can actually get all of that genocide anytime soon. We are left with Zephyr. Runs away. Not able to do that. And the Legion only losing out one person, which is the MOA, and the help on completely annihilated. Now is the time for the help on to push in the middle lane. Defense tower goes down. Melee barracks most probably will go down as well. With that said and done, they would most probably relegate themselves to the bottom lane and try to get the defense tower as much as possible. 30 minute racks in the middle lane. This is going really good for the Legion. Yep, good stuff. Legion team really looking very good. 19k gold lead for them. Help on team complete wipe there. Like I said, they have the token. The token is still online for Shanal here. And really, he does pick up... Oh my god, this is just like the final nail in the coffin. He picks up something that would give him a wing bow. And that is crazy. This team, Yumi Rong opponent, they are... They know what they want. They know that they can come in and milk on this mid-game shred. That Draconis is not farmed enough to take a team fight. They know that, you know, Zephyr early game getting a little bit to control there's nothing Zephyr can do as well and same goes for Fate so a lot of different strategy being at play here help on team they have a bit of the late game and they don't really have the mid game I think they might have a bit of the early game with the insane amount of stunts that they had but they just didn't really use it well and it's really up to crack and Leon there my MVP for this game did so well to make sure that he divert the attention away from the Swift Blade that Swift Blade get sufficient farm so, um, yeah, I think it's pretty evident that the Legion would be able to win this match, uh, hands down. Hellborn, they don't really have the, uh, the items that's uh, capable of stopping the Legion, uh, Legion team anytime soon. As you can see, uh, our Kraken, we do have a, um, this portal key uh, for initiation and of course for, uh, for damage as well as uh, defensive rolls. We do have the Demonic Breastplate and uh, top it off with a Helm of the Black Legion. Um, of course, Morax is full of utility as well as uh, survivability. We do have portal key, uh, shotgun head as well as Helm of the Black Legion. So two beefy he uh, heroes just right here, smack down in the middle. So I don't think that it will be easy for the Hellbound to even bring them out at all. So um, the combination of a um, uh, this uh, Silver Bullet of uh, the full arsenal of uh, skills from Fate oh, most probably Pearl. Yep. Witnessing Pearl something about this soon and starting going in on the Kraken. I don't think that anything's gonna happen. Meanwhile we do have this um Marx actually getting a kill in the middle lane and top lane back there. We do have Kraken taking a lot of magical damage but nope not gonna be dealt with at all. He's still able to do a lot of damage. We do have the release on the Kraken right in the middle lane. Oh, I mean the top lane over here. He gets the kill. He gets the kill. And of course, Fate tries to run away. We have Rhapsody going in. Staccato, 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 Staccato. No. Wait, what's going on? Fate goes into the NC. No, he goes into the trees. He's currently being attacked by Antling. Will he die from this? Stay no, in the no, trees, not. they say. Oh, yes. He's they doing say just that. that. Oh, Stay in the trees. That's right. The Good only stuff. one alive. Fate um, over here. And yeah. GGO players will call me Minuano. Minu, Minuano. Minuano. Yeah. Minuano. And that's Conceit well. coming in from uh, from the Hellborn. So that's the first win for the Legion and amazingly ended the game in 35 minutes. Yeah, good stuff there so far. Anyway, really well done by um, Yumi Rong opponents. Good gaming by them. Seafood Gaming, they really just cannot deal with that Kraken. It's. It's too crazy. That's it. I hope you guys enjoy that cast. And we'll be back with the next game real soon. This is Babel. Joining me today is Abstract. So, have a good night, guys.